The first anniversary, consisting of To the Praise of the Dead and the Anatomy, An Anatomy of the World, and a Funeral Elegy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Thomas Copeland. An Anatomy of the World by John Donne, wherein, by occasion of the untimely death of Mistress Elizabeth Drury, the frailty and the decay of this whole world is represented. The First Anniversary. To the Praise of the Dead and the Anatomy. Well died the world that we might live to see this world of wit in his anatomy. No evil once is good. So wilder heirs bedew their father's tombs with forced tears, whose state requites their loss. Whiles thus we gain, well may we walk in blacks, but not complain. Yet how can I consent the world is dead while this muse lives, which in his spirit's stead seems to inform a world, and bids it be in spite of loss or frail mortality? And thou, the subject of this well-born thought, thrice noble maid, couldst not have found nor sought a fitter time to yield to thy sad fate than whiles this spirit lives, that can relate thy worth so well to our last nephew's eyne, that they shall wonder both at his and thine, admired match, where strives in mutual grace the cunning pencil and the comely face, a task which thy fair goodness made too much for the bold pride of vulgar pens to touch. Enough is us to praise them that praise thee, and say that but enough those praises be which hadst thou lived had hid their fearful head from the angry checkings of thy modest red death bars reward and shame when envy's gone and gain tis safe to give the dead their own as then the wise egyptians want to lay more in their tombs than houses these of clay but those of brass or marble were so we give more unto thy ghost than unto thee yet what we give to thee thou gavest to us and mayst but thank thyself for being thus yet what thou gavest and wert o oh happy maid thy grace professed all due where tis repaid so these high songs that to thee suited been serve but to sound thy maker's praise in thine which thy dear soul as sweetly sings to him amid the choir of saints and seraphim as any angel's tongue can sing of thee the subjects differ though the skill agree for as by infant years men judge of age thy early love thy virtues did presage what an high part thou bearest in those best songs whereto no burden nor no end belongs sing on thou virgin soul whose lossful gain thy lovesick parents have bewailed in vain never may thy name be in our songs forgot till we shall sing thy ditty and thy note an anatomy of the world the first anniversary when that rich soul which to her heaven is gone whom all do celebrate who know they have won for who is sure he hath a soul unless it see and judge and follow worthiness and by deeds praise it he who doth not this may lodge an inmate soul but is not his when that queen ended here her progress time and as to her standing house to heaven did climb where loath to make the saints attend her long she's now a part both of the choir and song this world in that great earthquake languished for in a common bath of tears it bled which drew the strongest vital spirits out but succoured then with a perplexed doubt whether the world did lose or gain in this, because, since now no other way there is but goodness to see her whom all would see, all must endeavour to be good as she, this great consumption to a fever turned, and so the world had fits. It joyed, it mourned, and, as men think that agues physic are, and the ague being spent give over care, so thou, sick world mistakes thyself to be well when alas thou'rt in a lethargy her death did wound and tame thee then and then thou mightst have better spared the sun or man 
That wound was deep, but tis more misery that thou hast lost thy sense and memory. Twas heavy then to hear thy voice of moan, but this is worse, that thou art speechless grown. Thou hast forgot thy name thou hadst, thou wast nothing but she, and her thou hast or passed. For as a child kept from the font until a prince expected long come to fulfil the ceremonies, thou unnamed hadst laid, had not her coming thee her palace made. Her name defined thee, gave thee form and frame, and thou forgetst to celebrate thy name. Some months she hath been dead, but being dead measures of time are all determinate. But long she hath been away, long, long, yet none offers to tell us who it is that's gone. But, as in states doubtful of future heirs, when sickness without remedy impairs the present prince, there loath it should be said the prince doth languish, or the prince is dead. So mankind, feeling now a general thaw, a strong example gone equal to law, the cement, which did faithfully compact and glue all virtues, now resolved and slacked, thought it some blasphemy to say she was dead, or that our weakness was discovered in that confession. Therefore spoke no more than tongues, the soul being gone, the loss deplore. But, though it be too late to succour thee, sick world, yea, dead, yea, putrefied, since she thy intrinsic balm and thy preservative can never be renewed, thou never live, I, since no man can make thee live, will try what we may gain by thy anatomy. Her death hath taught us dearly that thou art corrupt and mortal in thy purest part. Let no man say the world itself being dead, tis labour lost to have discovered the world's infirmities, since there is none alive to study this dissection. For there's a kind of world remaining still. Though she which did inanimate and fill the world be gone, yet in this last long night her ghost doth walk, that is, a glimmering light, a faint, weak love of virtue and of good reflects from her on them which understood her worth. And though she have shut in all day, the twilight of her memory doth stay, which from the carcass of the old world free creates a new world, and new creatures be produced, the matter and the stuff of this her virtue, and the form our practice is. And though to be thus elemented arm these creatures from home-born intrinsic harm, for all assumed unto this dignity, so many weedless paradises be, which of themselves produce no venomous sin, except some foreign serpent bring it in, yet because outward storms the strongest break, and strength itself by confidence grows weak, this new world may be safer, being told the dangers and diseases of the old. For with due temper men do then forgo or covet things when they their true worth know. There is no health. Physicians say that we at best enjoy but a neutrality. And can there be worse sickness than to know that we are never well nor can be so? We are born ruinous. Poor mothers cry that children come not right nor orderly, except they headlong come and fall upon an ominous precipitation. How witty is ruin! How importunate upon mankind! It laboured to frustrate even God's purpose, and made woman, sent for man's relief, cause of his languishment. They were to good ends, and they are so still, but accessory and principal in ill. For that first marriage was our funeral. One woman at one blow then killed us all, and singly, one by one, they kill us now. We do delightfully ourselves allow to that consumption, and profusely blind we kill ourselves to propagate our kind. And yet we do not that, we are not men. There is not now that mankind which was then, when as the son and man did seem to strive, joint tenants of the world, who should survive? When stag and raven and the long-lived tree, compared with man, died in minority. When, if a slow-paced star had stolen away from the observer's marking, 
he might stay two or three hundred years to see it again and then make up his observation plain when as the age was long the size was great man's growth confessed and recompensed the meat so spacious and large that every soul did a fair kingdom and large realm control and when the very stature thus erect did that soul a good way towards heaven direct where is this mankind now who lives to age fit to be methuselah his page alas we scarce live long enough to try whether a true made clock run right or lie old grandsires talk of yesterday with sorrow and for our children we reserve to-morrow so short is life that every peasant strives in a torn house or field to have three lives and as in lasting so in length is man contracted to an inch who was a span for had a man at first in forests strayed or shipwrecked in the sea one would have laid a wager that an elephant or whale that met him would not hastily assail a thing so equal to him now alas the fairies and the pygmies well may pass as credible mankind decays so soon where scarce our father's shadows cast at noon only death adds to our length nor are we grown in stature to be men till we are none but this were light did our less volume hold all the old text or had we changed to gold their silver or disposed into less glass spirits of virtue which then scattered was but tis not so we are not retired but damped and as our bodies so our minds are cramped tis shrinking not close weaving that hath thus in mind and body both bedwarfed us we seem ambitious god's whole work to undo of nothing he made us and we strive too to bring ourselves to nothing back and we do what we can to do it so soon as he with new diseases on ourselves we war and with new physic a worse engine far thus man this world's vice-emperor in whom all faculties all graces are at home and if in other creatures they appear they're but man's ministers and legates there to work on their rebellions and reduce them to civility and to man's use this man whom god did woo and loath to tend till man came up did down to man descend this man so great that all that is is his oh what a trifle and poor thing he is if man were anything is nothing now help for at least some time to waste allow to his other wants yet when he did depart with her whom we lament he lost his heart she of whom the ancients seemed to prophesy when they called virtues by the name of she she in whom virtue was so much refined that for a lay unto so pure a mind she took the weaker sex she that could drive the poisonous tincture and the stain of eve out of her thoughts and deeds and purify all by a true religious alchemy she she is dead she's dead when thou knowest this thou knowest how poor trifling thing man is and learnst thus much by our anatomy the heart being perished no part can be free and that except thou feed not banquet on the supernatural food religion thy better growth grows withered and scant be more than man or thou less than an ant then as mankind so is the world's whole frame quite out of joint almost created lame for before god had made up all the rest corruption entered and depraved the best it seized the angels and then first of all the world did in her cradle take a fall and turned her brains and took a general main wronging each joint of the universal frame the noblest part man felt it first and then both beasts and plants cursed in the curse of man so did the world from the first hour decay that evening was beginning of the day 
And now the springs and summers which we see, Like sons of women after fifty be. And new philosophy calls all in doubt. The element of fire is quite put out, The sun is lost, and the earth, And though man's wit can well direct him Where to look for it. And freely men confess that this world spent When in the planets and the firmament They seek so many new. They see that this is crumbled out again To his atomies. Tis all in pieces, all coherence gone, All just supply and all relation, Prince, subject, father, son, are things for God. For every man alone thinks he hath got to be a phoenix, And that then can be none of that kind of which he is, but he. This is the world's condition now, And now she that should all parts to reunion bow, She that had all magnetic force alone To draw and fasten sundered parts in one, she whom wise nature had invented then when she observed that every sort of men did in the voyage of this world see stray and needed a new compass for their way she that was best and first original of all fair copies and the general steward to fate she whose rich eyes and breast gilt the west indies and perfumed the east whose having breathed in this world did bestow spice on those isles, and bade them still smell so, and that rich Indy which doth gold in ter is but as single money coined from her, she to whom this world must itself refer as suburbs for the microcosm of her, she, she is dead. She's dead. And thou knowest this, thou knowest how lame a cripple this world is, and learns thus much by our anatomy, that this world's general sickness doth not lie in any humour or one certain part, but, as thou sawst it rotten at the heart, thou seest a hectic fever hath got hold of the whole substance not to be controlled, and that thou hast but one way not to admit the world's infection, to be none of it. For the world's subtlest, immaterial parts feel this consuming wounds and ages darts. For the world's beauty is decayed or gone. Beauty, that's colour and proportion. We think the heavens enjoy their spherical, their round proportion embracing all. But yet their various and perplexed course observed in divers ages doth enforce men to find out so many eccentric parts, such divers downright lines and overthwarts as disproportion that pure form. It tears the firmament in eight and forty shares, and in these constellations then arise new stars, and old do vanish from our eyes, as though heaven suffered earthquakes peace or war when new towers rise and old demolished are they have impaled within a zodiac the freeborn sun and keep twelve signs awake to watch his steps the goat and crab control and fright him back who else to either pole did not these tropics fetter him might run for his course is not round nor can the sun perfect a circle or maintain his way one inch direct but where he rose to-day he comes no more, But with a cousining line steals by that point, And so is serpentine. And seeming weary with his reeling thus, He means to sleep, being now fall nearer us. So of the stars which boast that they do run in circle still, None ends where he begun. All their proportions lame, it sinks, it swells, For... Of meridians and parallels man hath weaved out a net, And this net thrown upon the heavens, And now they are his own. Loath to go up the hill, or labour thus to go to heaven, We make heaven come to us. We spur, we rein the stars, And in their race they're diversely content to obey our pace. But keeps the earth her round proportion still? Doth not a Teneriffe or higher hill rise so high like a rock 
that one might think the floating moon would shipwreck there and sink seas are so deep that whales being struck to-day perchance to-morrow scarce at middle way of their wished journey's end the bottom die and men to sound depth so much line untie as one might justly think that there would rise at then thereof one of the antipodes if under all a vault infernal be which sure is spacious except that we invent another torment that there must millions into a straight hot room be thrust then solidness and roundness have no place are these but warts and pockholes in the face of the earth think so but yet confess in this the world's proportion disfigured is that those two legs whereon it doth rely reward and punishment are bent awry and oh it can no more be questioned that beauty's best proportion is dead since even grief itself which now alone is left us is without proportion she by whose lines proportion should be examined measure of all symmetry whom had that ancient seen who thought souls made of harmony he would at next have said that harmony was she and thence infer that souls were but resultances from her and did from her into our bodies go as to our eyes the forms from objects flow she who if those great doctors truly said that dark to man's proportions was made had been a type for that as that might be a type of her in this that contrary both elements and passions lived at peace in her who caused all civil war to cease she after whom what form soe'er we see is discord and rude incongruity she she is dead she's dead when thou know'st this thou know'st how ugly a monster this world is and learns thus much by our anatomy that here is nothing to enamour thee and that not only faults in inward parts corruptions in our brains or in our hearts poisoning the fountains whence our actions spring and danger us but that if everything be not done fitly and in proportion to satisfy wise and good lookers on since most men be such as most think they be they're loathsome too by this deformity for good and well must in our actions meet wicked is not much worse than indiscreet but beauty's other second element colour and lustre now is as near spent and had the world his just proportion were it a ring still yet the stone is gone as a compassionate turquoise which doth tell by looking pale the wearer is not well as gold falls sick being stung with mercury all the world parts of such complexion be when nature was most busy the first week swaddling the new-born earth god seemed to like that she should sport herself sometimes and play to mingle and vary colours every day and then as though she could not make enow himself his various rainbow did allow sight is the noblest sense of any one yet sight hath only colour to feed on and colour is decayed summer's robe grows dusky and like an oft dyed garment shows our blushing red which used in cheeks to spread is inward sunk and only our souls are red perchance the world might have recovered if she whom we lament had not been dead but she in whom all white and red and blue beauty's ingredients voluntary grew as in an unvexed paradise from whom did all things verdure and their lustre come whose composition was miraculous being all colour all diaphanous for air and fire but thick gross bodies were and liveliest stones but drowsy and pale to her she she is dead she's dead when thou know'st this thou know'st how wan a ghost this our world is and learn'st thus much by our anatomy that it should more affright than pleasure thee and that since all fair colour then did sink 
Tis now but wicked vanity to think to colour vicious deeds with good pretence, or with bought colours to elude men's sense. Nor in aught more this world's decay appears than that her influence the heaven forbears, or that the elements do not feel this, the father or the mother barren is. The clouds conceive not rain, or do not pour in the due birth time down the balmy shower. There doth not motherly sit on the earth to hatch her seasons and give all things birth. Springtimes were common cradles, but are tombs, and false conceptions fill the general wounds. There show such meteors as none can see, not only what they mean, but what they be. Earth such new worms as would have troubled much the Egyptian magies to have made more such. What artist now dares boast that he can bring heaven hither or constellate anything so as the influence of those stars may be imprisoned in an herb or charm or tree and do by touch all which those stars could do? The art is lost and correspondence too. For heaven gives little, and the earth takes less, and man least knows their trade and purposes. If this commerce twixt heaven and earth were not embarred, and all this traffic quite forgot, she, for whose loss we have lamented thus, would work more fully and powerfully on us. Since herbs and roots, by dying, lose not all, but they, yea, ashes too, are medicinal, death could not quench her virtue so but that it would be if not followed wondered at and all the world would be one dying swan to sing her funeral praise and vanish then but as some serpent's poison hurteth not except it be from the live serpent shot so doth her virtue need her here to fit that unto us she working more than it but she in whom to such maturity virtue was grown past growth that it must die, she from whose influence all impressions came, but by receiver's impotency is lame, who, though she could not transubstantiate all states to gold, yet gilded every state, so that some princes have some temperance, some counsellors some purpose to advance the common profit, and some people have some stay no more than kings should give to crave some women have some taciturnity some nunnery some grains of chastity she that did thus much and much more could do but that our age was iron and rusty too she she is dead she is dead when thou know'st this thou know'st how dry a cinder this world is and learns thus much by our anatomy, that tis in vain to dew or mollify it with thy tears or sweat or blood. Nothing is worth our travel, grief, or perishing, but those rich joys which did possess her heart, of which she is now partaker and a part. But as in cutting up a man that's dead, the body will not last out to have read on every part, and therefore men direct their speech to parts that are of most effect, so the world's carcass would not last if I were punctual in this anatomy, nor smells it well to hearers if one tell them the disease who fain would think they're well. Here therefore be the end, and blessed maid, of whom is meant whatever hath been said, or shall be spoken well by any tongue, whose name refines coarse lines and makes prose song, accept this tribute, and his first year's rent, who, till his dark short taper's end be spent, as oft as thy feast sees this widowed earth, will yearly celebrate thy second birth, that is, thy death. For though the soul of man be got when man is made, tis born but then when man doth die. Our bodies, as the womb, and as a midwife, death directs it home. And you, her creatures, whom she works upon, and have your last and best concoction from her example and her virtue, if you, 
in reverence to her do think it due that no one should her praises thus rehearse as matter fit for chronicle not verse vouchsafe to call to mind that god did make a last and lasting peace a song he spake to moses to deliver unto all that song because he knew they would let fall the law the prophets and the history but keep the song still in their memory such an opinion in due measure made me this great office boldly to invade nor could incomprehensibleness deter me from thus trying to imprison her which when i saw that a strict grave could do i saw not why verse might not do so too verse hath a middle nature heaven keeps souls the grave keeps bodies verse the fame and rose a funeral elegy tis lost to trust a tomb with such a guest or to confine her in a marble chest alas what's marble jet or porphyry prized with the chrysolite of either eye or with those pearls and rubies which she was join the two indies in one tomb tis glass and so is all to her materials though every inch were ten escurials yet she is demolished can we keep her then in works of hands or of the wits of men can these memorials rags of paper give life to that name by which name they must live sickly alas short-lived abortive be those carcass verses whose soul is not she and can she who no longer would be she being such a tabernacle stoop to be in paper wrapped or when she would not lie in such a house dwell in an elegy but tis no matter we may well allow verse to live so long as the world will now for her death wounded it the world contains princes for arms and counsellors for brains lawyers for tongues divines for hearts and more the rich for stomachs and for backs the poor the officers for hands merchants for feet by which remote and distant countries meet but those fine spirits which do tune and set this organ are those pieces which beget wonder and love and these were she and she being spent the world must needs decrepit be for since death will proceed to triumph still he can find nothing after her to kill except the world itself so great as she thus brave and confident may nature be death cannot give her such another blow because she cannot such another show but must we say she's dead may it not be said that as a sundered clock is piecemeal laid not to be lost but by the maker's hand repolished without error then to stand or as the afric niger stream enwombs itself into the earth and after comes having first made a natural bridge to pass for many leagues far greater than it was may it not be said that her grave shall restore her greater purer firmer than before heaven may say this and joy in it but can we who live and lack her hear this vantage see what is to us alas if there had been an angel made a throne or cherubim we lose by it and as aged men are glad being tasteless grown to joy and joys they had so now the sick starved world must feed upon this joy that we had her who now is gone rejoice then nature and this world that you fearing the last fires hastening to subdue your force and vigour ere it were near gone wisely bestowed and laid it all on one one whose clear body was so pure and thin because it need disguise no thought within twas but a through-light scar her mind to enroll or exhalation breathed out from her soul one whom all men who durst no more admired and whom whoe'er had worth enough desired as when a temple's built saints emulate 
to which of them it shall be consecrate. But as when heaven looks on us with new eyes, those new stars every artist exercise, what place they should assign to them they doubt, argue, and agree not, to those stars go out. So the world studied whose this piece should be, till she can be nobody's else, nor she, but like a lamp of balsam, desired rather to adorn than last, she soon expired, clothed in her virgin white integrity. For marriage, though it do not stain, doth die. To scape the infirmities which wait upon woman, she went away before she was one. And the world's busy noise to overcome took so much death as served for opium. For though she could not nor could choose to die, she hath yielded to too long an ecstasy. He which not knowing her said history should come to read the book of destiny, how fair and chaste, humble and high she'd been, much promised, much performed at not fifteen, and measuring future things by things before, should turn the leaf to read, and read no more, would think that either destiny mistook, or that some leaves were torn out of the book. But tis not so. Fate did but usher her to years of reason's use, and then infer her destiny to herself, which liberty she took but for thus much, thus much to die her modesty not suffering her to be fellow-commissioner with destiny, she did no more but die. If after her any shall live which dare true good prefer, every such person is her delegate, to accomplish that which should have been her fate. They shall make up that book, and shall have thanks of fate and her for filling up their blanks. For future virtuous deeds are legacies, which from the gift of her example rise. And tis in heaven part of spiritual mirth to see how well the good play her on earth. End of the First Anniversary Recording by Thomas Copeland The Second Anniversary by John Donne consisting of the Harbinger to the Progress and of the Progress of the Soul. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Of the Progress of the Soul, wherein by occasion of the religious death of Mistress Elizabeth Drury, the incommodities of the soul in this life and her exaltation in the next are contemplated. The Second Anniversary. The Harbinger to the Progress. Two souls move here, and mine, a third, must move paces of admiration and of love. Thy soul, dear virgin, whose this tribute is, moved from this mortal sphere to lively bliss, and yet moves still, and still aspires to see the world's last day, thy glory's full degree. Like as those stars which thou o'erlookest far are in their place, and yet still moved are, no soul, whiles with the luggage of this clay at clog it is, can follow thee half-way, or see thy flight, which doth our thoughts outgo so fast, that now the lightnings move but slow. But now thou art as high in heaven flown as heaven's from us. What soul besides thine own can tell thy joys, or say he can relate thy glorious journals in that blessed state? I envy thee, rich soul, I envy thee, although I cannot yet thy glory see. And thou, great spirit, which hers followed hast, so fast as none can follow thine so fast, so far as none can follow thine so far, and if this flesh did not the passage bar, hadst caught her, let me wonder at thy flight, which long agone hadst lost the vulgar sight, and now makes proud the better eyes, that they can see thee lessened in thine airy way. So while thou makest her soul by progress known, Thou makest a noble progress of thine own, From this world's carpus having mounted high To that pure life of immortality. Since thine aspiring thoughts themselves so raise, That more may not beseem a creature's praise, Yet still thou vowst her more, And every year makest a new progress While thou wanderest there. 
still upward mount, and let thy maker's praise honour thy Lara, and adorn thy lays. And since thy muse her head in heaven shrouds, O oh, let her never stoop below the clouds. And if those glorious sainted souls may know, or what we do, or what we sing below, those acts, those songs, shall still content them best, which praise those awful powers that make them blessed. Of the Progress of the Soul, the Second Anniversary Nothing could make me sooner to confess that this world had an everlastingness than to consider that a year is run since both this lower world's and the sun's sun, the lustre and the vigour of this all did set, for blasphemy to say did fall. But as a ship which hath struck sail doth run by force of that force which before it won, or as sometimes in a beheaded man though at those two red seas which freely ran one from the trunk another from the head his soul be sailed to her eternal bed his eyes will twinkle and his tongue will roll as though he beckoned and called back his soul he grasps his hands and he pulls up his feet and seems to reach and to step forth to meet his soul when all these motions which we saw are but as ice which crackles at a thaw or as a lute which in moist weather rings her knell alone by cracking of her strings. So struggles this dead world now she is gone, for there is motion and corruption. As some days are at the creation named before the sun, the which framed days was framed, so after this sun set some show appears, and orderly vicissitude of years. Yet... A new deluge and of lethe flood hath drowned us all. All have forgot all good, forgetting her, the main reserve of all. Yet in this deluge, gross and general, thou seest me strive for life. My life shall be to be hereafter praise for praising thee. Immortal maid, who, though thou wouldst refuse the name of mother, be unto my muse a father since her chaste ambition is yearly to bring forth such a child as this. These hymns may work on future wits, and so may great-grandchildren of thy praises grow. And so, though not revive, embalm and spice the world which else would putrefy with vice. For thus man may extend thy progeny until man do but vanish and not die. These hymns thy issue may increase so long as till God's great Veneti change the song. Thirst for that time, O oh my insatiate soul, and serve thy thirst with God's safe-sealing bowl. Be thirsty still, and drink still till thou go to the only hell to be hydroptic so. Forget this rotten world, and unto thee let thine own times as an old story be. Be not concerned, study not why nor when, do not so much as not believe a man, for, though to err be worst, to try truths forth is far more business than this world is worth. The world is but a carcass, thou art fed by it but as a worm that carcass bred. And why shouldst thou, poor worm, consider more, when this world will grow better than before, than those thy fellow worms do think upon that carcass's last resurrection? Forget this world, and scarce think of it so as of old clothes cast off a year ago. To be thus stupid is alacrity. Men thus lethargic have best memory. Look upward. That's towards her, whose happy state we now lament not, but congratulate. She, to whom all this world was but a stage, where all sat hearkening how her youthful age should be employed, because in all she did some figure of the golden times was hid, who could not lack whate'er this world could give, because she was the form that made it live, nor could complain that this world was unfit to be stayed in then when she was in it. She that first tried indifferent desires by virtue, and virtue by religious fires, she to whose person paradise adhered as courts to princes, she whose eyes ensphered starlight enough to have made the south 
control had she been there the starful northern pole she she is gone she's gone when thou knowest this what fragmentary rubbish this world is thou knowest and that it is not worth a thought he honours it too much that thinks it not think then my soul that death is but a groom which brings a taper to the outward room whence thou spiest first a little glimmering light and after brings it nearer to thy sight for such approaches doth heaven make in death think thyself labouring now with broken breath and think those broken and soft notes to be division and thy happiest harmony think thee laid on thy deathbed loose and slack and think that but unbinding of a pack to take one precious thing thy soul from thence think thyself parched with fever's violence anger thine ague more by calling it thy physic chide the slackness of the fit think that thou hearst thy knell and think no more but that as bells called thee to church before so this to the triumphant church calls thee think satan's sergeants round about thee be and think that but for legacies they thrust give one thy pride to another give thy lust give them those sins which they gave thee before and trust the immaculate blood to wash thy score think thy friends weeping round and think that they weep but because they go not yet thy way think that they close thine eyes and think in this that they confess much in the world amiss who dare not trust a dead man's eye with that which they from god and angels cover not think that they shroud thee up and think from thence they reinvest thee in white innocence think that thy body rots and if so low thy soul exalted so thy thoughts can go think thee a prince who of themselves create worms which insensibly devour their state think that they bury thee and think that right lays thee to sleep but a saint lucy's night think these things cheerfully and if thou be drowsy or slack remember then that she she whose complexion was so even made that which of her ingredients should invade the other three no fear no art could guess so far were all removed from more or less but as in mithridate or just perfumes where all good things being met no one presumes to govern or to triumph on the rest only because all were no part was best and as though all do know that quantities are made of lines and lines from points arise none can these lines or qualities unjoint and say this is a line or this a point so though the elements and humours were in her one could not say this governs there whose even constitution might have won any disease to venture on the sun rather than her and make a spirit fear that he to disuniting subject were to whose proportions if we would compare cubes they're unstable circles angular she who was such a chain as fate employs to bring mankind all fortunes it enjoys so fast so even wrought as one would think no accident could threaten any link she she embraced a sickness gave it meat the purest blood and breath that e'er it eat and hath taught us that though a good man hath title to heaven and plead it by his faith and though he may pretend a conquest since heaven was content to suffer violence yea though he plead a long possession too for there in heaven on earth who heaven's works do though he had right and power and place before yet death must usher and unlock the door think further on thyself my soul and think how thou at first wast made but in a sink think that it argued some infirmity that those two souls which then thou foundst in me thou fedst upon and drewst into thee both my second soul of sense and first of growth think but how poor thou wast how obnoxious whom a small lump of flesh could poison thus this curded milk this poor unlittered whelp my body 
could beyond escape or help infect thee with original sin and thou couldst neither then refuse nor leave it now think that no stubborn sullen anchoret which fixed to a pillar or a grave doth sit bedded and bathed in all his orgers dwells so foully as our souls in their first built cells think in how poor a prison thou didst lie after enabled but to suck and cry think when twas grown to most twas a poor inn a province packed up in two yards of skin and that usurped or threatened with the rage of sicknesses or their true mother age but think that death hath now enfranchised thee thou hast thy expansion now and liberty think that a rusty piece discharged is flown in pieces and the bullet is his own and freely flies this to thy soul allow think thy shell broke think thy soul hatched but now and think this slow-paced soul which late did cleave to a body and went but by the body's leave twenty perchance or thirty miles a day dispatches in a minute all the way twixt heaven and earth she stays not in the air to look what meteors there themselves prepare she carries no desire to know nor sense whether there's middle region be intense with element of fire she doth not know whether she passed by such a place or no she baits not at the moon nor cares to try whether in that new world men live and die venus retards her not to inquire how she can being one star hesper and vesper be he that charmed argus eyes sweet mercury works not on her who now is grown all eye who if she meet the body of the sun goes through not staying till his course be run who finds in mars's camp no corps of guard nor is by jove nor by his father barred but ere she can consider how she went at once is at and through the firmament and as these stars were but so many beads strung on one string speed undistinguished leads her through those spheres as through the beads a string whose quick succession makes it still one thing as doth the pith which lest our body slack strings fast the little bones of neck and back so by the soul doth death string heaven and earth for when our soul enjoys this our third birth creation gave her one a second grace heaven is as near and present to her face as colours are and objects in a room where darkness was before when tapers come this must my soul thy long short progress be to advance these thoughts remember then that she she whose fair body no such prison was but that a soul might well be pleased to pass an age in her she whose rich beauty lent mintage to other beauties for they went but for so much as they were like to her she in whose body if we dare prefer this low world to so high a mark as she the western treasure eastern spicery europe and Africa, and the unknown rest were easily found or what in them was best and when we've made this large discovery of all in her some one part then will be twenty such parts whose plenty and riches is enough to make twenty such worlds as this she whom had they known who did first betroth the tutelar angels and assigned one both to nations cities and to companies to functions offices and dignities and to each several man to him and him they would have given her one for every limb she of whose soul if we may say twas gold her body was the electrum and did hold many degrees of that we understood her by her sight a pure and eloquent blood spoke in her cheeks and so distinctly wrought that one might almost say her body thought she she thus richly and largely housed is gone and chides us slow-paced snails who crawl upon our prisons prison earth nor think us well longer than whilst we bear our brittle shell but twere but little to have changed our room if as we were in this our living tomb oppressed with ignorance we still were so poor soul in this thy flesh what dost thou know thou knowest thyself so little as thou knowest not how thou didst die nor how thou wast begot 
thou neither know'st how thou at first camest in, nor how thou took'st the poison of man's sin. Nor dost thou, though thou know'st that thou art so, by what way thou art made immortal know. Thou art too narrow, wretch, to comprehend even thyself. Yea, though thou wouldst but bend to know thy body. Have not all souls thought for many ages that our body is wrought of air and fire and other elements? And now they think of new ingredients, and one soul thinks one, and another way another thinks, and tis an even lay. Know'st thou but how the stone doth enter in the bladder's cave and never break the skin? Know'st thou how blood, which to the heart doth flow, doth from one ventricle to the other go? And for the putrid stuff which thou dost spit, know'st thou how thy lungs have attracted it? There are no passages, so that there is, for aught thou know'st, piercing of substances. And of those many opinions which men raise of nails and hairs, dost thou know which to praise? What hope have we to know ourselves when we know not the least things which for our use be? We see in authors too stiff to recant a hundred controversies of an ant, and yet one watches, starves, freezes, and sweats to know but catechisms and alphabets of unconcerning things, matters of fact, how others on our stage their parts did act, what Caesar did, yea, and what Cicero said. Why grass is green, or why our blood is red, are mysteries which none have reached unto. In this low form, poor soul, what wilt thou do? When wilt thou shake off this pedantry of being taught by sense and fantasy? Thou look'st through spectacles, small things seem great below. But up unto the watch-tower get, and see all things despoiled of fallacies. Thou shalt not peep through lattices of eyes, nor hear through labyrinths of ears, nor learn by circuit or collections to discern. In heaven thou straight know'st all concerning it, and what concerns it not shalt straight forget. There thou, but in no other school, mayst be perchance as learned and as full as she, she who all libraries had throughly read at home in her own thoughts and practice it as much good as would make as many more. She whose example they must all implore who would or do or think well, and confess that all the virtuous actions they express are but a new and worse edition of her some one thought or one action. She who in thought of knowing heaven was grown here upon earth to such perfection that she hath Ever since to heaven she came, in a far fairer print, but read the same. She, she not satisfied with all this weight, for so much knowledge as would overfreight another, it would ballast her, is gone as well to enjoy as get perfection, and calls us after her, in that she took, taking herself, our best and worthiest book. Return not, my soul, from this ecstasy and meditation of what thou shalt be to earthly thoughts, till it to thee appear with whom thy conversation must be there. With whom wilt thou converse? What station canst thou choose out free from infection that will not give thee theirs, nor drink in thine? Shalt thou not find a spongy, slack, divine, drink and suck in the instructions of great men, and for the word of God vent them again? Are there not some courts, and then no things be so like as courts, which in this let us see that wits and tongues of libellers are weak, because they do more ill than these can speak? The poison's gone through all. Poisons affect chiefly the chiefest part. But some effect in nails and hairs, yea, excrements, will show. So lies the poison of sin in the most low. Up, up, my drowsy soul, where thy new ear shall in the angel's songs no discord hear, where thou shalt see the blessed mother made joy in not being that which men have said, where she is exalted more for being good than for her interest of motherhood. Up to those patriarchs which did longer sit expecting Christ than they've enjoyed him yet. Up to those prophets which now gladly see their prophecies grown to be history. Up to the apostles 
who did bravely run all the sun's course with more light than the sun, up to those martyrs who did calmly bleed oil to the apostles' lamps, due to their seed, up to those virgins who thought that almost they made joint tenants with the Holy Ghost if they to any should his temple give. Up, up, for in that squadron there doth live she, who hath carried thither new degrees as to their number to their dignities, she who being to herself a state, enjoyed all royalties which any state employed, for she made wars and triumphs, reason still did not o'erthrow but rectify her will and she made peace for no peace is like this that beauty and chastity together kiss she did high justice for she crucified every first motion of rebellious pride and she gave pardons and was liberal for only herself except she pardoned all she coined in this that her impressions gave to all our actions all the worth they have. She gave protections. The thoughts of her breast Satan's rude officers could ne'er arrest. As these prerogatives being met in one made her a sovereign state, religion made her a church, and these two made her all. She who was all this all and could not fall to worse by company, for she was still more antidote than all the world was ill she she doth leave it and by death survive all this in heaven whither who doth not strive the more because she's there he doth not know that accidental joys in heaven do grow but pause my soul and study ere thou fall on accidental joys the sensual still before accessories do abide a trial must the principle be tried and what essential joy canst thou expect here upon earth what permanent effect of transitory causes dost thou love beauty and beauty worthy this is to move poor cousin cousiner that she and that thou which did begin to love are neither now you are both fluid changed since yesterday next day repairs but ill last day's decay nor are although the river keep the name yesterday's waters and to-day's the same so flows her face and thine eyes neither now that saint nor pilgrim which your loving vow concerned remains but whilst you think you be constant your hourly in inconstancy Honour may have pretence unto our love, because that God did live so long above without this honour, and then loved it so that he at last bade creatures to bestow honour on him, not that he needed it, but that to his hands man might grow more fit. But since all honours from inferiors flow, for they do give it, princes do but show whom they would have so honoured, and that this on such opinions and capacities is built as rise and fall to more and less alas tis but a casual happiness hath ever any man to himself assigned this or that happiness to arrest his mind but that another man which takes a worse thinks him a fool for having ta'en that course they who did labour babel's tower to wreck might have considered that for that effect all this whole solid earth could not allow nor furnish forth materials enow and that this centre to raise such a place was far too little to have been the base no more affords this world foundation direct true joy for all the means in one but as the heathen made them several gods of all god's benefits and all his rods for as the wine and corn and onions are gods unto them so agues be in war and as by changing that whole precious gold to such small copper coins they lost the old and lost their only god who ever must be sought alone and not in such a thrust so much mankind true happiness mistakes no joy enjoys that man that many makes then so to thy first pitch work up again know that all lines which circles do contain for once that they the centre touch do touch twice the circumference and be thou such 
double on heaven thy thoughts on earth employed all will not serve only who have enjoyed the sight of god in fullness can think it for it is both the object and the wit this is his central joy when neither he can suffer diminution nor we to such a full and such a filling good had the angels once looked on him they had stood to fill the place of one of them or more she whom we celebrate is gone before she who had here so much essential joy as no chance could distract much less destroy who with god's presence was acquainted so hearing and speaking to him as to know his face in any natural stone or tree better than when in images they be who kept by diligent devotion god's image in such reparation within her heart that what decay was grown was her first parent's fault and not her own who being solicited to any act still heard god pleading his safe pre-contract who by a faithful confidence was here betrothed to god and now is married there whose twilights were more clear than our midday who dreamt devoutlier than most used to pray who being here filled with grace yet strove to be both where more grace and more capacity at once is given she to heaven is gone who made this world in some proportion a heaven and here became unto us all joy as our joys admit essential but could this low world joys essential touch heaven's accidental joys would pass them much how poor and lame must then our casual be if thy prince will his subjects to call thee my lord and this do swell thee thou art then by being greater grown to be less man when no physician of redress can speak a joyful casual violence may break a dangerous apostom in thy breast and whilst thou joyst in this the dangerous rest the bag may rise up and so strangle thee but e'er was casual may ever be what should the nature change or make the same certain which was but casual when it came all casual joy doth loud and plainly say only by coming that it can away only in heaven joy's strength is never spent and accidental things are permanent joy of a soul's arrival ne'er decays for that soul ever joys and ever stays the joy that their last great consummation approaches in the resurrection when earthly bodies more celestial shall be than angels were for they could fall this kind of joy doth every day admit degrees of growth but none of losing it in this fresh joy tis no small part that she she in whose goodness he that names degree doth injure her tis loss to be called best there where the stuff is not such as the rest she who left such a body as even she only in heaven could learn how it can be made better for she rather was two souls or like to full on both sides written rolls where eyes might read upon the outward skin as strong records for god as minds within she who by making full perfection grow pieces a circle and still keeps it so longed for and longing for it to heaven is gone where she receives and gives a titian here in a place where misdevotion frames a thousand prayers to saints whose very names the ancient church knew not heaven knows not yet and where what laws of poetry admit laws of religion have at least the same immortal maid i might invoke thy name could any saint provoke that appetite thou here shouldst make me a french convertite but thou wouldst not nor wouldst thou be content to take this for my second year's true rent did this coin bear any other stamp than his that gave thee power to do me to say this since his will is that to posterity thou shouldst for life and death a pattern be and that the world should notice have of this the purpose and authority is his thou art the proclamation 
and I am the trumpet at whose voice the people came. End of the Second Anniversary End of the Anniversary Poems Recording by Thomas Copeland